Good morning and God bless you on this Tuesday morning. I'd like to continue our series we started yesterday entitled, Can You Relate? And as promised, as we looked at Eve yesterday, we'll look at Adam today. And yesterday we asked the question, can you relate to a time when evil appeared to be good? When there was that deception in your life where sin was suddenly so tantalizing, so enticing, that even though you kind of knew it was wrong, you also really, really wanted to try it. Well, today we're going to put Adam on the hot seat, but really we're putting ourselves on the hot seat, me and, and you. And we're asking, can you relate to Adam? And there's two ways to look at this. The, the first way is Adam was standing right next to Eve. You know, growing up in Sunday school, the way the story was told, it, it was always as though that Eve was tempted. You know, Eve heard the, saint, the serpent. Eve was the one who took the fruit. And then she had to go get Adam and bring him back or bring fruit to him. And it's amazing because when you read the text, it says she took some fruit, ate it, and gave it to her husband who was right there with her. And you think about the implications of that. That means Adam heard everything she heard. And I want to ask you the question, can you relate to Adam, to Adam in that sometimes you know somebody's being tempted, you know they're being lied to, and yet you say nothing. I call it the train wreck. You know, you see the train wreck coming, you know it's gonna happen, and it perhaps you don't know if you're saying something can stop it or not, but you feel that tug of war of whether you should stay and say something or not, and so often we remain silent. And this isn't about getting into each other's business, but when it comes to loving each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, Ephesians chapter 4 says we speak the truth in love to one another because we know that sin is deadly and we know that sin is addictive and so we want to warn the people that we love away from what's what's been happening in their life now the other thing that I want you to think about with Adam and ask you the question can you relate can you, be a, can you relate to a time where somebody else's temptation became your temptation as well? Where you saw what they were doing, and again, you maybe sat off on the side and you kind of knew it was wrong, but you also kind of thought, you know, maybe it's actually starting to look good to me too. And if they're doing it, maybe I should do it. And you cave in, you're kind of like the collateral damage of that temptation. You get caught up in somebody else's sin. So I'm asking you these questions today, not to convict you, not to, to heap a burden of guilt and shame for times that maybe we haven't been as a good a friend to someone as we should, and maybe we haven't spoken the truth in love. Not to leave you with the guilt and shame, but that from this point forward as Christians, we're all reminded that's part of our responsibility. If we really love each other, we'll speak up. And in love, we'll reach out and we'll try to warn and we'll try to protect and we'll try to reason with those who are caught in the midst of temptations and hope and pray that somebody will do that for us when we're the one in the midst of the temptation and having to make those choices. And if you find that you also have been in the position where somebody else's problem has become your problem, and perhaps they were the ones that kind of introduced it to you, it's still a reminder, just as the, the one who sinned first, you know, the Lord loved both Adam and Eve. And even after they sinned, he didn't stop caring for them. He told them that, yeah, there's gonna be consequences, because I warned you beforehand there would be consequences. But the beauty of God's grace is, is that God said, yeah, there's consequences, but I'm still with you. I still have a relationship with you. And you look at the rest of chapter 3 and chapter 4, that God provides for them. He takes care of them, even as they have to live with the consequences of their choices. And I think about what that means. And in my life, how many times God has reaffirmed his grace to me in spite of the fact that I've sinned multiple times in multiple ways. But he always reminds me, Tom, you know, 
because I've done some of these things, you know, there's some consequences that you have to work through and that you have to live through. The beauty is the grace of Jesus never runs out. And honesty with him and simply confessing and saying, Lord, when I think of the story of Eve, I can relate. When I think of the story of Adam, yeah, I can relate. So if you can relate, talk to Jesus about it. Pray and ask forgiveness, ask for courage and wisdom and words and opportunity to speak into the lives of people you love and are worried about. God bless you and have a great day. Amen.